Today we have a couple of very powerful readings of both the Old Law, the Law of the Ten Commandments, and the New Law, the fulfillment of Christ Jesus. And don't ever convince, uh, be convinced or question the preparation God was making through the people of the Old Test in the Old Testament. Because the same law is fulfilled in the lawgiver who becomes flesh. And Jesus Christ tells us that one day we will be judged. We're not going to fall into one of two extremes. And we're not going to recall as a church to avoid these. One is the sin of despair. And many people fall into this trap, unfortunately, where they believe that their sins are so overwhelming that they have no hope of salvation. That is one extreme. That is actually a sin. Despair is a sin against hope. And indeed, sometimes it can even lead to blasphemy, this doubt of the Holy Spirit and the power of God to forgive sins on earth, no matter the, the greatness of the gravity of that sin. And the other extreme is the sin of divine presumption, which is probably a lot more common today in our church and in our world, that God is love, or my God is loving. He could never send someone to hell. That you hear that refrain. Only God is love, and God is loving, but God is also good, and God is also just. And the fact that God has told us that we will be judged for our life is not an option an optional belief as a Catholic and a Christian. It's a matter of revelation. And it's a matter that should not lead us to, to be fearful or afraid, but should impel us to leave, live a life of holiness. The Second Vatican Council in the, in the document Gaudium et Spes speaks about how indeed we're called to live, if you will, in two cities. And speaking of the language of St. Augustine, as Christians, we're lived and we're living here in this world, but we're living for eternity, the city of God. As I say, sometimes we don't have dual citizenship. We are Christians first, and we live in the world, but we're not of the world. We do not have dual citizenship. Our passport, if you will, who we belong to is Christ Jesus. In our baptism, in the sacraments, Baptism and confirmation, you and I have been sealed like a great seal into wax with an indelible mark that can never be overturned, and it will be there for all eternity. This is our citizenship. What are we called to do to be a faithful citizen, a faithful Christian, a member of the city of God here on earth so that we can one day enter into heaven? We hear the commandments of Christ Jesus, and they are not condition, they are not optional. They are conditional. We must serve the poor. We must feed the hungry. We must love those and be with those that are orphaned, strangers, sick, or in prison. There will be no excuses after this life for not seeing Christ seen opportunities to meet God in our neighbors. We have been warned, we have been sent, and let's pray that we will not be found wanting. We pray that as citizens of God in the city of the world, we may not be so consumed and sacrifice our one citizenship for the pleasures or the promises of the city of this world. For ultimately, that figure we hear of often in the readings of Lent that Jesus is contending with, and indeed as conquered is Satan, who is the president, the prince of this world. And that whole attention we have to fall back into sin, to say, my faith or my religion is for private life. When I leave the walls of this church, we leave religion here. When it might be something I might do privately at home, but when we go out into our school, or out into the streets, or out into the restaurants, or into the workplace, we shouldn't bring religion into it, because nothing good can come from that. 
Indeed, only good things can come from faithful Christians who authentically live their life in the world. And this is the call of second, the Second Vatican Council, to be members of the one city of God, even though we're living in this city here on earth right now. This is the word par where parish comes from. We are pilgrim people on a journey, but we're living here and now. But we also have our eyes fixed on heaven. And this is why we have the command in, at the beginning of our first reading. Before receiving those Ten Commandments, what's the point? What's the point of all these laws, these what, we, what the world would say are restrictions? The point is this. We are called to be holy. Our Lord tells us with love, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. The only great tragedy in this life as a Christian is if we do not become a saint. Somewhere along the line, we may have missed the point, missed the mark. That is the point of the Christian life. That is the point of every law, every pew, every parking lot, every pillar, every piece of art, is to remind us that we're called to be holy, and we're called to live out that holiness here in the world. And indeed, this means we cannot have a divided self. Well, here in the world, we have a separation of church and state. Yes, that is a Christian Western invention. We say that as a church. This is important. You need to run and take care of the world. Father Andrew and I have other matters to take care of. You need to be involved in the world, and there is a separation. But there is no separation of church and state. There's no separation of religion and spirituality spirituality from your life and your workplace. In you, you're called to be one and you're called to be holy, a Christian person in the world. And you bring your faith and your religion and your spirituality into the world and you are called to renew the face of the earth. This is what Pope John Paul II called us to. This is what the Vatican Council called us to. This is what our baptism calls us to. Let us take this opportunity and let to once again go to that desert, desert place to encounter God, to turn away from sin, and to serve others, especially the poor, as we would serve and minister to God himself. Friends, let us come to this Eucharist with humble hearts let us enter into this feast so that we may one day share the eternal banquet of all the saints in heaven.